So you may be wondering why DaVinci Resolve has two pages that you can edit video in, either the cut page or the edit page, both edit video, which one is better? Well, I don't think it's a question of which one is better. Certainly they have different feature sets and they're designed for different things. The cut page is primarily designed for speed. That's its number one function, be the fastest interface for editing video in possible. And in this video, I'm gonna show you one of its awesome features called the source tape, which is gonna really help you when it comes to going through a bunch of footage really quickly and then getting on with your editing. So let's take a look. Just before we dive into the excitement around the source tape mode in the cut page, what I want to just do is take a second to say thank you to everybody who currently subscribes to the channel. You're amazing. We are, at the time of recording, just about to hit 2,500 subscribers, and we couldn't do that without each and every one of you. Thank you so much indeed. It means a lot, and if you're returning, welcome back. Also, if you're new around here, hi. There are other people here on the channel too with you, subscribing to the channel and enjoying the content regularly. We talk about all sorts of things to do with video production, but primarily DaVinci Resolve. So if you enjoy that sort of stuff, think about subscribing, would you? That'd be great. Thanks very much. Let's jump into the main video today. And very quickly, just before we get started with the video, whilst we have this lovely speed editor over here, and I could use that for this particular video. In fact, I might do that in another video if you're interested. We do already have a speed editor video up on the channel, so do check that out if that's of interest. But certainly we're gonna be concentrating in this video on using the mouse and keyboard traditional style setup because I know that some of you won't have a speed editor or you maybe haven't received it yet and you just want to know how to do it with a mouse and a keyboard. Absolutely fine, no problem at all. All of this video from this point forward will be non-speed editor related. Equally, the speed editor hasn't got a name yet. So I would like to run a quick challenge on this channel. If you want to name our speed editor, pop your best ideas in the comments below and I will take all of those into account and we will name our speed editor at some point in the future. Okay, that was a bit of fun. Let's get into the stuff. Okay, so we've dived over to DaVinci Resolve and I'm in the cut page as you can see. So up here in the media pool, which is one of the main areas in the cut page, I have some bins or folders where I have some footage. And if I click in, I can see those particular clips, which is great. I've done a little bit of basic organization. So this is a little bit further ahead. So we've brought some clips in, we've organized them, we've given them some bins and color coordination, and we have a timeline. And the timeline is waiting for us down in the timeline area. And we actually have two timelines in the cut page, this top timeline here, and this bottom timeline here. I'll go into those in a bit more detail in either another video or slightly later in this video. But for now, just remember that the top timeline is zoomed out all the way, whereas the bottom timeline is zoomed in view. So basically, it's just a full extent view on the top. So it shows everything in your program from start to finish in that timeline. And then the bottom part here is your essentially your zoomed in view. Okay. And then we have some different viewers up in the top here. So let me just draw your attention to those here. So we have the source clip, the source tape, and the timeline viewers. There's three different viewers, and they all serve slightly different functions. The source clip shows you everything in the media pool. The Timeline shows you what's on your timeline and the source tape mode is what we're talking about today is an amazing fast action tool that helps you look at everything in your media pool at once. So let me just show you the old way of working. Normally you would find a bin, you go to a clip and either you'd live preview it by scrubbing here like so and then scrubbing the next one and so on and so forth or you double click it to load it into the viewer and then you'd be able to play it back that way. But that's always a bit cumbersome and it's not particularly handy when you've got lots and lots of clips to look through. So let's show you another way of doing it. So let's dive in, let's get back to our master bin and let's show you the source tape. When I dive into source tape mode, watch what happens. First of all, let's have a little look at the viewer down here. So this area here, you can see just here underneath the main image is my play bar and you can see how it's got little broken up sections with white and the audio waveform. Now, obviously each one of those white lines denotes a new clip. So as I scrub through here, you can see that I am changing clips like so, which is really very handy. And obviously the shorter sections mean they're shorter clips and the longer sections here mean that they are longer clips. And what you'll see is also as I scrub through the playhead, the media pool up here will change to make sure that I'm always seeing the current clip that I'm hovering over in the play bar. So as I come through, You'll notice how that's changing now. Very, very handy indeed, because now I can very quickly just play back all of my media and just cycle through it at my leisure. And the great thing is I can always press the in and the out keyboard shortcut. So that's the I and the O key. So I and O to mark an in and out. And once I've marked my in and out, I can easily bring it down onto my timeline, either by using these buttons here. So we've either got the insert, we've got the append, overwrite, close up, place on top, 
or source overwrite. So we've got all these functions here or up in the edit menu. We also have all of these options showing here as well. And then equally, we can also just use our keyboard shortcuts. So we could use the, and again, they're listed here. So we've got the function keys, F and F9 and F10, which will help us bring things onto the timeline. So if we do that, F9, bring that onto the timeline, and you can see we now have a clip on our timeline, which I can then scrub through. Notice here when I go down to my timeline, I'm automatically switching over to my timeline view. Now what's great about this is if I want to go back, I can go back to my source tape and I can carry on working and finding the next clip that I want to bring onto the timeline. Now this is all very well and good, but what's also very cool about this particular source tape view is that we can change the way that it's sorted if we'd like to. So for example, let me just clear what I've just done there by backing up and then clearing my in and my out points by pressing the option button on a Mac or the alt button on a keyboard and the X key and you'll see my ins and my outs have reset. If I come up here to the sorting button just in the top right of the media pool and click it, I can see that I can sort media by various different means. And at the moment it's sorted by time code, but that's not particularly helpful to me. So let's try sorting by bin instead. So when I now sort by the bin, what you can actually see now is I've got my bin called master arriving and actually it's just the arriving bin. Then I've got the interviews bin, which is the one I'm currently in, my logo, riding, working. So I've been able to sort out all my footage very quickly in order of bin. And that's also been reflected down here on the play bar. So you'll notice that that's actually shifted around. And I'll, let me do it again and show you can see everything shifts around to accommodate my new sort order, which is again, very, very cool. And actually you can do it by a whole load of things. Clip name being one, you can do it by date and time. And you notice you see how the date and the sort of the header of that section that it's showing me updates in the media pool. Very, very handy indeed. Let's go to by bin for the time being. So let's say that, okay, this first bin here, this arriving bin is really nice. There's some nice shots that we want to look through, but the problem is it takes up a very small area here over on the play bar. So it's not easy to navigate through that and really get fine control. So here's where another benefit of the source tape mode comes in. Let's say I just want to dive in a bit further into this bin particularly and have just these clips laid out on the play bar underneath the viewer. Well, if I come and hit the source tape button again, watch what happens. I've now just jumped into this bin and you can see how I've dived a little bit deeper into this bin and I'm only seeing these four clips now. Equally, these four clips are the only ones that are laid out in the play bar. So now when I go through, I've got much more fine tuned control of each of those clips. And I can quickly go through those clips in that bin, mark ins and outs and drop them onto the timeline and then move on. The great thing is here to get back to the bin level or the top bin level, I just simply press escape on the keyboard and you'll notice how all my clips have come back and my source tape has updated to be able to show me all of my clips. So let me just show you that again very quickly and I'll show you a very quick working example. So let's say that we are on this first clip and you can see here if I zoom in slightly that yeah, it's very, very tight. There's very hard to be able to mark in and out on that particular shot very easily in this view. So let's dive in a bit deeper by pressing the source tape again and I'm diving in a tiny bit deeper and now I can make some shot choices and decisions on where my in point wants to be. So let me just go through Maybe just here as the camera settles, just as he comes through, marking it in. I'm going to zip through just to there, marking out, and I'm going to throw it onto the timeline by pressing shortcut for F9, which drops it onto the timeline. Let me press my arrow keys, my up and down keys, to jump forward to the next shot and play forward. So again, a little bit further away, he's a bit further away. So I'm just going to run through just to the point where he's coming down, press I for the in point, scrub through to the point where he stops, O for the out point, throw it down onto the timeline. And I'm going to go forward a bit further. And here we go, he's locking up his bike. So let me just mark it in and out there, add it on to the timeline. And again, I'm just pressing smart insert at this point to get it down to the timeline. I could also append as well if I wanted to. So here's a shot here where he's coming forward. Okay, I'm just gonna mark it in there, drag forward, he pulls up and he gets out there. I'm gonna mark my outs and I'm gonna put that onto the timeline. I'm also gonna back, go back to this first shot and I'm gonna get the point where he walks across from there and I'm gonna mark an in and an out, very good, onto the timeline. Bang, very, very quickly have I got an edit put together. Psst, are you still here? Awesome, if you're still here and watching, then you are a superstar. Thank you so much indeed for watching all the way through the video. I really, really appreciate it. And just to say thank you, I'm gonna give you a secret code word and that's gonna pop up on the screen here. Now, that code word is important, keep it safe and all will become clear at a later stage. If you'd like to, you can drop it in the comments below. Don't say anything else though, just pop it in the comments below 
and we'll see if anyone else cottons onto it. But the point is, keep it safe. There'll be something coming up where you'll need to use that to be able to redeem something in the future, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. If I jump over to the timeline view, you can then scrub through. Okay, so what we're gonna to need to do is do a bit of sorting in my clips. Again, this is where the cut page makes that very, very easy to do, because I can use this top timeline here to simply drag and drop the order of my clips. So now we have the chap coming down the hill, and we just want to get him part as he comes past the window. So I'm gonna just trim this clip in. Again, I can do it either in the bottom timeline or the top timeline. So I'm gonna drag it across there. So he comes across, he goes past the window. As he goes past the window, we're gonna cut from that shot and we're gonna bring it in. So that's not in the right place. So let's go forward. We're gonna bring this shot in. I'm just gonna move that up. You see how when I bring it up and then hover it over the gap, it makes way. There we go. And in fact, there's too much. So I'm just gonna go from there. I'm gonna trim it back a little bit. Very easy, just using the mouse and the keyboard at the minute to do that. There are keyboard shortcuts that can help you do that, but for the time being, we're just gonna move it through. And then again, we're gonna cut here. I'm gonna bring it back a bit. I'm actually gonna go back to my source tape because I want to find another specific bit. Just the bit where he lets the dog out. I'm gonna to cut to the wide shot again. There we go, maybe this from here. I'm gonna just bring that in there. Okay, great, so let me just now drop that in and I want to insert that. So looking at where my smart indicator is positioned here will help me work out that where I'm gonna insert this shot. So I'm gonna insert it right here by pressing F9. So I've inserted that, lovely. So I'm gonna go from there. He's gonna let the dog out, gonna go across and then he's gonna bike up his bike. And actually we can just delete this one because we don't need it anymore. Perfect, there we go. That's a very, very quick edit. And you can see how I moved for, through the source clip or the source tape to be able to do that. Now. Because I've jumped from the timeline and back, it's actually taken me out again. But if I wanted to very easily, all I need to do is press source tape and I'm back into that bin. If I'm done with the bin, I can simply press escape, come back. Let me go down to my other bin. So maybe there's a shot later on. Okay, let me look at this shot where he's working. So I want to dive into this bin. So I click on the clip that I want, press source tape again, and I'm now in that bin and I've got all these clips laid out and I can just look through this if I want to and continue adding them to my timeline. So there we go, that is the source tape mode in the cut page. It's built for speed. I hope it helps you speed up your editing process, particularly the bit that is pretty monotonous where you're just sorting through footage, getting it onto the timeline, trying to flesh out that edit and getting a rough edit in place. If it was useful to you, then please take a second and hit the thumbs up button for me. It would mean the world. And it also just lets YouTube know that this was a good video and people were enjoying it. And hopefully it will also recommend that other people watch it as well. So hopefully you're helping other people out by doing that for me. So do do that. If you have any questions, Questions, leave those in the comments and I will try and get back to you as best as I can. Otherwise, have a wonderful, wonderful week, guys. I'm going to be back next week, hopefully, with another video for you as well. So until then, stay tuned, stay well, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.